Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the Losses of Europe. I'm your host, American Mocha Lover, and right now we must talk about a particular handshake. The secretary's sight honed on the outstretched hand, coal wrinkled about the, his size and closer squint. A small band that glowed dull against the Florence lamps rung around his fourth finger. Less ornaments than his own and maybe several years more worn, but a wedding ring all the same. He glanced at the conference room, or what was a conference room. Shredded and whole paper covered every square inch of floorboard, topped by stray mug shards slicked from drying pools of coffee and the stray blood smear. Its occupants fared little better. Either they were dozing off where they stood, or sat, or laid, wincing at cuts and bruises covered in flimsy gauze pads, or both, 24 hours straight of wheeling and dealing and treating it, taking its toll. No doubt the Japanese were eager to leave with what they had, at least they'll enjoy, at least then they'll enjoy sleeping in cushions and more than a few hours in a flight home. Can you say the same for his? That they were satisfied with what they had? Will his countrymen improve what he'd wrangled from the Empire when all said and done? Or will they dig their heels and ask for more? The secretary then turned to the man with the outstretched hand opposite his side on the long table. Stodgy with a bald spot, purple bags for eyes, a rotund belly protruding from an unbuttoned suit. He might as well have been a middle-aged salary man coming home from overtime rather than the Empire's premier representative abroad. Yet, his tired smile and open palm seemed to offer a hope just as mundane, peace from the, across the aisle, the very first in a very long time. Nodding to himself, the Secretary of State clasped his hands firm with his own and shook or cleared his throat. Mr. Minister began, we regret to clasp his own hand. Cool. And let's do, we have no political power left. Uh, so do minimal investment, I suppose, for this one. Because last time we did win the last issue. So, how do we get to that handshake uh, event? Well, I, at the end of the last episode, I said that I had, you know, messed around with a few more things, and I did. Basically, to get that event, I had to go back to February and basically redo the entire conference, which happens every single time I play as a, the NPP trying to get Hawaii back. So, we'll see what happens. But, to get that, it just, I had to retry it like 20 times, and it eventually does go, it just, it's just RNG sometimes, so... Uh, other than that, right now, the NPP is united and ready for anything, which is great. Uh, this is an election year, so that's pretty good for us. And an ocean pacified. Look at that. The Pacific Ocean was hardly Pacific, even before the Second World War. Great powers passed had offered to at least a stick of kindling to the... Had offered to at least a stick of kindling to the hearth fires below the large cauldron, stoking its waters to an even simmer. Not too hot that its riches can't be plumbed, nor too mild that all may freely sate their greed with them. This delicate, almost gentlemanly balance was shattered when the world bared witness to boiling seas in a sunset stronger than the daylight sun. As mushroom clouds ended one age and announced the next, many feared the Pacific will forever save between Twilight and Armageddon, kept in place by two ambitions greater than the expanse of which they both contest. Such fears were laid to rest today by a pair of disheveled, or disheveled ambassadors, all but bracing each other's in and never rated weights as they hobbled out of a hotel lobby. Against camera flashes and microphones, a hand lifted each paper bearing two signatures from the governments of the two great nations. Murmured speculation diffused throughout the gathered press before the wary Secretary of State pried open the Foreign Minister's sake bottle with bare teeth, draught half its vigor, and let loose an emphatic, prophetic cry, peace in her time. And I apologize if you heard some sort of paper in the background. It's just because I was trying to shift things around here a little bit. Peace in her time. We get 150 political power. We get a ray of hope, which replaces the American Malays, which is really good. And, as someone did say in the comments below, I hope we get Hawaii. And you know what? I hope so too. But it looks like we've done it, my friends. Yeah, sometimes you just have to say it's coming. It, it really sucks. Uh, we did pretty much everything that we could have done right. And it just kept giving us the... The Japanese say no, so it's just RNG. It's literally just RNG, so. Hungry sets of Germany, and a Hawaii's back, my friends. Oh, I love gamer George Wallace. I can't wait to see what he does next, as we're building more city factories, so. And our soldiers are home from Indonesia. Our position secured. Look at that. Day after a month of hard fighting across archipelago, the Indonesian civil war has come to an end as loyalist forces surrender and drove in Sukarno's top generals formally declared the fight over. With Sukarno ousted, the popular front of free Indonesia has taken power. Comprised of anti-Sukarno republicans, oppressed ethnic groups, communists, Islamists, this ragtag army proved too strong for the loyalist forces. Already, a democratic government is being set up in Jakarta with much of the former rebel leaders taking up leadership positions. With the victory of free Indonesia, the administration of George Wallace has seen a notable increase in popular approval. Having promised to defeat Sukarno and the triumph of democracy. The President's promise appears to have become a reality. Exactly to what degree the U.S. support affected the Indonesian Civil War remains a matter of debate, but for now, America seems happy to see a favorable conclusion to the war. The jungle finally cools. The focus tree will change. We get more stability, more political power. We remove a lot of national spirits if we had them. Uh, change of liberal democracy goes down. MPP grows more popular. 
You betcha. Aw, yeah. And also, yeah, like I said earlier, we're united, so we don't even have to spend anything here. So, thank you very much, Diplomatic Arena. Don't care. Black Arms Trading, don't really care right now. MPP stuff. So, we still have... The people are still unhappy, but hey, you know what? That's okay. That's okay for now. But we still can deal with Italy. So, <clears throat> promote Italian culture in America increases our influence. Well, we probably want to increase our influence. So, there you go. We got to save our political power, too. So, all right. So, what are we researching? We got stuff for a while. Uh, yeah, not bad, guys. CIA operative reports of duty. Nice. 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 There you go. Polls are updated. Yep, I don't trust the polls, so. We could do more stuff here, but we're looking pretty good already. And actually, uh, points. We have one point. Mm. Maybe we want to save it. Maybe. Anything else around here? No. All right. Very good. Very, very good. Flying Black Market. We'll probably do that eventually. Can we train anybody? Can we pick a research? No, we already did everything we possibly could, so. Yeah, we have nothing we could do here, huh? Interesting. We've got plenty of money for the CIA budget, so. <clears throat> Operational success? Great. Oh, we're helping out the Iberians, I guess. What is that? Uh, help Germany out. Intelligence analysis. Let's see. Do, the measure of image of Republicans and Democrats? Sure, why not? I love COINTELPRO, right? Actually, can George Wallace do that? Uh, what do we have down here? Focus on other stuff. Nice. Very, very nice. Win him over? Yeah, that would be good. See the status of our support for a future economic reform if we were to pursue it in the decisions menu. Alright, they're running a respectable campaign. Liberals reunify Kazakhstan. Cool. And we still have Fire of the People down under. Actually, let's take a look at our national spirits then. Last Bastion of Liberty. Token Civil Rights Legislation. Uh, we have High Unity, which is pretty nice. That's pretty nice, not gonna lie. All right, let's see. Invest in the OFN nations. It was recommended that we do that until, yeah. So we get even more unity. Add war support to each one of them. I kinda wanna do win them over, just because I wanna see what we can do. Foreign businesses, or American business. We probably wanna do win them over, so. We'll, abandon, we'll be abandoned if the country's in crisis, so. Uh, mm, I think it'll be okay to do at least one of these. So, the National Progressive Party is founded on one great principle, America first. American in interests come first in diplomacy, especially when it comes to reclaiming our stolen state, but the needs of the American workers and families come first as well. Sure, some of them may be on the fence about a government thanks to a segregation issue, but we're going to show Americans across the country that they have no greater friend than President Wallace. President Wallace will expand his support base through two social welfare pro programs, Medicare and Social Security. But given workers across the country some federal support, he should be able to coast to victory again by grateful seniors and the newly insured. Very nice. Ah, uh, let's see. We're going to need their support later on, but you know what? Let's diminish their popular uh, support. Cool. And, uh, can I really get... Uh, I don't want to boost that up anymore, so... We're just going to kind of leave it there for now. I don't want to increase it. I don't want to lower it. I don't want to hurt my political power gain. So, and we're going to campaign. So, the goal is to win the elections and then do some gamer moves. God dang, the Southwest usually was pretty R&D, or at least not NPP. Well, that's not bad. Let's do Southwest. Why not? And his voter base? East Northern FIAs? States rights and segregation. Unhappy, unhappy. Cool. Very nice. Yeah, we gotta keep an eye on Italy, because I want to make sure that we get them into us. Well, maybe not into us, but within our faction. Italy chooses her future. Oh, look at that. Over the past few weeks, both the OFN and Co-Prosperity Sphere were entangled in a bitter fight over the heart of the most beautiful maiden of Europe, the sweet little Italian Empire. Tears were shed, bouquets, and gauntlets were thrown, but in the end, both suitors received this cold shoulder for now. Oh, no! The lady just isn't ready to commit yet. No, she needs some time to find herself in forward drone path for a while. The decision to abstain from choosing a side may not be as expected as initially soon. Both the Co-Prosperity Sphere and the OFN seem extraordinarily interested in bringing Italy to their side. So holding out might move one of the two... One of the two sides to come up with a better deal. Few love triangles and with a clear winner, but this one might just result in Italy getting the upper hand. At least they didn't choose the Japanese. That's really disappointing. I mean, I did like minimal investment. I did like, we did was it, two mediums and then minimal, so. I mean, if you look at that, I don't know. That, that This looks like they would come to us, but whatever. A presentation on the Pacific. President Wallace sat joined by Curtis LeMay, J.W. Fulbright. 
uh, yeah, Wilbur Mills and Arle Bird and prepared for the massive crowd that awaited the five men right outside the gates of the White House. For the first time in his presidency, Walsh was intent on delivering a speech regarding the foreign policy of his administration, exciting thousands of Americans into attendance, knowing the National Progressive Party's radical stance of foreign policy. Finally, the doors had opened, and already the five men were met with hundreds of camera flashes as he walked up to the podium set up outside. Good afternoon, my fellow American patriots. Each and every one of you represents something to me. The product of a beautiful country, a country which has been bruised and beaten in recent history from the horrors of the world's past. As I look back to the Second World War, the images rushed through my mind. The men who stood and fought in the British Isles, a fire and destructive heck fire raining down on Pearl Harbor after the atomic bomb had been dropped, and the stream of men scarred physically and mentally by the brutalities that the Japanese had committed to them and the compatriots out there in the Pacific. And you know what I have to say to that, America? Never again. The crowd roared in enthusiasm for President Wallace's and invigorating statements. Now, more than ever, the U.S. is prepared to put the empire on the defensive. As the four brilliant men behind me on about constructed a plan, a plan to unite our allies to rally the good people of the world together in a similar goal. The goal of taking the fight back to the Japanese for trying to destroy the ideals of freedom and liberty by spilling blood, American blood, into the Pacific. My administration is constructing a revolutionary trade plan for for the United States, one that allow members of the OFN to reach themselves while defending against the exploitative, coercive economic ventures of the Japanese. Together, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, all of our nations, and further beyond, has sworn uh, ink and blood a pact which unites our country together in a simple two words, never again. Wallace stepped down to return to the White House, but behind him, the noise of angry and proud Americans mixed to sing the national anthem is chant an all too familiar name, Wallace, for all veterans for the United States. And now Congress enacts daylight savings time. Seasons bring not only snow melts and browning leaves, but also their prefer preference over when the sun rises and sets. Whereas winter prefers to grace her rolling white panoramas with an extra hour of warm sunlight or sunset light. Summer instead bids the star wake an hour early, as if to gr earlier greet the sleeping peoples under its watchful gaze. Romans, Englishmen, Frenchmen, civilizations which have relied on the sun's firmamental flight to keep track of time were left with no choice but to adjust their hours to four different maidens' tastes. Tastes. Today, the U.S. shall join their lengthy, un their hallowed ranks as President George Wallace signs the Uniform Time Act of 1966. Its pages decreed that from 0200 hours to April's last Sunday to 0200 hours of October's last Sunday, all clocks across the America's five time zones shall be moved forward by exactly one hour. Proponents have argued for a multitude of benefits savings daylight in such a manner that will bring, including a notable reduction in home electricity bills. Should they somehow wish, states may choose to opt out of the latest and most unusual amendment to the nation's timekeeping standards, provided that their exemptions uh, apply statewide. Remember kids, spring forward and fall back. Okay, so, off screen, I wanted to, I figured, you know what, I had to go look at the guide one more time that I'm following for the whole, you know, Wallace route, but, you know, so we have Italy here again, and we just won the issue. Now, we're this far in, and maybe Italy will still reject us, which kind of breaks our heart, but still, we'll see what happens. I just wanted to try it again, just to see if we could get anything else here. And I did go with, like, my own investment? I couldn't do medium, I think, so, whatever, it is what it is. We'll see if we can get Italy under us, but other than that, we've just finished win them over. And then, this is a union, not an empire. Dixie likes this. You can now proceed to return the individual states to their proper authority. Our nation is not the sum imperial dominion where the emperor in D.C. can tell every man and woman and a gosh darn child what kind of land he should live in. America is a coalition of states, each with their own culture, identity, and way of life. We've got to let the people know this is how America is and how it's going to be. President Wallace is going to go on the TV and give the people very stern talking too. And the federal government is not going to hold your hand, nor is it going to trample over the rights of the states. After all, wasn't there a whole civil war over states' rights? <clears throat> the Battle of Birmingham. Oh boy. The president could hear the cheering and applause which had been exploding for the last hour outside the mayor's office on the 20th Street. Finally, the protests had been plaguing the surrounding areas beat back, uh, beat back uh, to allow the patriots to the f speeches front. Walking down the hall, along with a few other officers of the Alabama State Police, Mayor Boutwell greeted the president with an awkward smile, shaking his hand with a cordial, the people of Birmingham are waiting there for you, Mr. President. Wallace and the state police seemed to burst out the door of the mayor's office, inciting a roar of applause and cheers for the leader of the U.S. Stepping up to the microphone with a wide toothed grin, saying, Good morning to the great patriots here in Birmingham, Alabama, as the crowd grew louder and more fervent. Having served in the U.S. Capitol, I can guarantee you one thing, my friends. The federal government is rotten from the inside out. Everywhere I turn, the leading senators all the way down to the, some of the aides are looking to constrict your rights. Whether it be your work, your right to bear arms, all the way to your gosh darn ways of life. 
As a servant to the American people, I cannot bear to witness such injustices happen to all of you, no matter what politician may want to choke the rights out of you. Segregation is a right. Segregation is a choice, and my administration will not only allow this choice, but enforce it as well. As we speak, the top minds of the military of the U.S. is aiming to reorganize the protective forces within the mainland of our country, where the protection of state-bound militias created and organized to guarantee your rights and protections from the hands of these political wrongdoers. I will not stand for your rights. Uh, written in the Constitution of the U.S. to be gutted, I stand with you. As the president exploded upon the podium at Birmingham, his most fervent supporters cheered on, even bringing in some of the stable minds of the RDs. However, all the way in the back, those looking to protest continue to, tr to try to get closer, only to get beat and pushed back by the Alabama State Police. Against the road, we stand strong. Wallace's voter base will expect more states' rights legislation to be passed. Well, that's good. I'm not going to pass any more, though, probably, until we have the midterm elections. Oh, crap. Oh, we're still going at this, huh? I guess mild investments. If that's the case, we're going to spend more civilian money then. The Beach Boys release Pet Sounds. The Beach Boys have done it again, releasing their 11th album, Pet Sounds, to both critical and public acclaim. However, fans have noticed something unusual about it. It is a complete break from the regular surf's rock style. Electric guitars have been replaced by string sections. The lyrics once about the sun and sand now talk about love and heartbreak. And the more interesting sound effects include th thermons, barking dogs, and prepared pianos and freight train whistles. However, the singers are still the Beach Boys as always, and their vocal arrangements have become even more elaborated and layered. Critics are already making comparisons to Phil Spector, a music producer whose wall of sound styles immensely influential Beach Boys front fronter Brian Wilson. Although critics are split as to whether the album was a failed experiment or a bold new step for music, many of the fans have been taken to it eagerly nonetheless. With sobering events of the past several years, it's a little surprise that listeners are desiring a more emotional, conflicted type of pop music. Why are they missing the formula? The album is amazing. We'll go with that one. Now, nice. so we're building more civilian factories. Operational success sounds pretty good. We're trying to help out Iberia as much as possible. And my goodness, we're going to need a lot of political power for this. Polls are updated. Very cool. Very, very nice. Let's see. Anything else here? Stabilize. Yeah. Disrupt the bumping machine. Yeah, we'll contribute to the AAS. We really want to see the Iberians do well here. So, The death of a prince is never cool. Um, hopefully, RDs run a campaign. Oh, boy. I've got more political power, which is actually pretty good. We'll, we're going to need that to increase our influence. Significantly decrease Japanese influence. Huh. Wow. Uh, the Japanese really want him in for that one. I think they've invested a lot there, so. Alright, so we're done with the air doctrine. Very nice. It's 1966. Happy. Hope you're having a good year. Maybe you're not a happy new year, because it is May. Almost June, so. It's not a new year, but. Hope you all doing well. Construction, we could spend more, but now we good. We're going to cut down that debt. I know it means there's no point to cut down the debt, but. Still. Still. At least in my mind, I feel like we're, we're preparing the next generation debt so they can spend more money and get more debt themselves. All right, so we, this is a family state. Cool, increase the federalization. I don't want to touch any more of that stuff until realistically <clears throat> after the midterm. So we gotta be smart about it. But we'll go down under or the OFM. Let's go with uh, the OFM. The RDs may be hesitant about sharing the industrial bounty of America with its allies, but we know better. A stronger alliance means a stronger America, and so we must promptly strike up deals with our allies where we give them foreign aid in exchange for them using it to buy American arms and equipment. All the president's men blow the lid on the box office. Uh, uh, if you'd like to read about this one, this happens every time he plays America. Please go right ahead. It, it's okay. It's not, you know, super astounding or anything like that, but it, it's, all, it's all right. I think we'll go with the East Coast next as well. Yeah. All the president's men. Operation success is good. Cool. Critical success in spite of its failures or our failures. So, all right. Help stabilize Iberia. Some more. You know, we're doing all this stuff. They're probably just going to collapse anyways. we got a lot of expertise, too. We're done with all the research, which is kind of sucky, but whatever. We already have 10... Actually, we can only have a maximum of 10 operators or operatives. Well, we have 11. Just George Wallace knows what he's doing. He's actually being a political mastermind right now by us. Uh, avoiding controversial things right before the elections. It is only June, but our northern brothers, our friends of the north, are our most important allies after the fall of Europe. Bound by a common language, culture, and origin, we stand proudly together in defense. Now, the idea was once born from the Magna Carta and ages gone by. Sadly, their economy struggled without the old Commonwealth trade as their most important trade partner. We should help them out with cross-border investments and dis discounted trade deals that they should get the old line roaring again. Following the weeks of intense negotiations, uh, I mean, this is, if you want to read about this one, I mean, it's just Japan won the issue. Battle for Italy continues. We must redouble our efforts. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. It is what it is. Uh, let's see. Weaken the NSDAP bureaucracy. Ooh. 
a reformist. Oh, yeah, we could probably try that. We could try that. It's probably not going to go very well for us. Cool. Best of luck to them. Well, I mean, look how far down they are to us. There's no way they want to go independence, right? We need more political power now, though, which really sucks. But whatever. That's fine. Hmm. I wish we could do maximum investment levels, but we'll do mild. We don't have the political power for it, which really sucks, but whatever. Run a million campaign, calamitous campaign, and our old ally. Uh, military construction and military police, nice. The whole thing goes a little more unified. Maybe we'll do that one next. How about the Mossies? We love the Australians here in America. I think. I got nothing wrong, bad to say about them, so. Down under. Some of our most important allies come from a land down under, where the women glow and the men plunder. The Australians produce more than just kangaroos and big knives. They also work for our fierce soldiers, as uh, shown in both world wars. Let us review our plans for helping them out, which is a very, very good thing. Oh, that's auto bypasses, huh? Our new friend. Oh, from Guyana. Okay, that's kind of cool. Uh, even though we did lose them before, so whatever. Oh, crud. Hopefully we can get something down there, so. All right, hold it. It's unhappy, unhappy. Business become a, has become a party which balances the needs of the worker and businessman. Cutting a deal. Oh, cr Oh, we get to see this stuff. Yeah. No one supports our efforts. Jesus Christ. Yeah. But then again, we haven't really gone down the way at all, so it's fine. It's totally fine. The Rockies? Colorado and Idaho? The Rockies, huh? Yeah, let's try the, we'll try the Rockies. Hopefully we have... I'm hoping to get at least 45 senators for the far right. We might not be able to get down there, but let's hope it works. Best of luck. We have 23 days. We might be able to get enough. 0.77, 23 days. Uh, yeah, we, we'll probably could do at least a little bit there. Increase our investments in them as well, so. Any other technology? Nope. Down, down, under. The docks of Darwin. Back to Sydney, why not? Australia is our ace in the hole when it comes to Southeast Asia. But in order for our allies to be of the utmost help to us when facing our foes, we need to boost our economy with an expanded industrial base. This will make it easier to produce supplies closer to the front lines of the co-prosperity sphere so we don't have to make them back here, truck them to the west coast, then ship them across the Pacific. As an added bonus, it'll also help their nation grow as well. That's a good thing. Also, let's see, before we get too far, uh, I want to do at least one more thing here, increase our influence. Yeah... Decrease Italian influence. Decrease, increase our influence? Yes. There we go. Uh, let's see. These guys are still divided. Oh, they actually... I think they rebelled, and then there were more rebellions here? Yuri? Yuri! You sound very familiar. Free Workers Republic of Siberia? Hmm. Actually, I don't think I've seen that portrait of him. Huh. Maybe I have. Maybe I have it. Reform Siberian Socialist Workers Republic. Ivan Sevastyanov. So you guys are still like this. Actually, the Republic of Nenetsia. And the Euro Republic is here. The Dragunov, oh boy. And the WRF. So, down under. Fallman, you're going to want to see this. The shift foreman raced out of the mining offices as his miners rushed out of the mines, racing towards the entrance to the complex. The ground rumbled faintly as the newest American excavator lumbered into sight. Sitting well over the height of three men and belching diesel smoke from its exhaust, the mining machine crawled over the pitted rocks of the path leading to Mount Isa Mines in Queensland Outback. The miner who had pulled the foreman outside could barely hide his excitement. Did you know this was coming? The foreman nodded, hiding his own amazement much more successfully. Sure, he'd signed off on the mystery paperwork sent over by the corporate in response to the latest requisition. Something about an American program. More red tape from Canberra was nothing new. But this was marvelous con contraception. It was absolutely new, and as the excavator's claws roared to life and ripped into its face. Doing it in an instant what would have taken our old machine two hours. He joined his min miners in a raucous yell. Thank God for the Americans. Ah, oh, yeah. America, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're really entrenching ourselves in German German uh, politics here. Cutting a deal, yeah, I don't like seeing zero, 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 zero. I don't like seeing that many zeros. The only time I like seeing that many zeros is if there's a different number in front of those zeros and it's in my paycheck, so. A million zeros after a one in a paycheck? Cool, that'd be really nice. And Japanese proposal, yeah. Uh, Italy chooses her future. Well, even if with this one, that's that's, that's very weird. Like, we, they didn't go for us again. It's, I don't know. Like I said, with, like, the whole Hawaii thing, it, it's RNG. So as much as I tried again to get this done, I guess it just wasn't in the cards. No matter how much influence we have with them and how little independence they want. So it sucks that we couldn't get them, but, hey, it is what it is. Oh, wait, hold on. No, Italy joins the free world. Um, okay. 
America, Italian American communities across the U.S. erupted in celebration today as Italy officially signed legislation to join the OFN as a member despite immense Japanese pressure. With this move, the Italian people have struck a violent blow to the OFN's efforts to contain the dual menace of the unity pact and Japanese co prosperity sphere. The OFN has gained an important foothold in Europe, access to the Suez Canal, and access to some of the world's largest oil reserves in the Middle East. While the Cold War is so far from won, there's still a widespread feeling among the population that things may finally be looking up for the forces of the free world. Another shining light in the sea of darkness? Not bad, okay, that was. I, thought, I was just like already, like, ready to just like, oh, well, we didn't get it. That's very odd. Okay, well, whatever. 600 factories? Not enough. Definitely not enough. And maybe it's time that we actually probably should start building up a nice little reserve of manpower. That probably would be a pretty good thing to do. Yeah, buddy. Alright. Ah, uh, campaigning time? I love campaigning. Stabilize Iberia? Might as well. It's only money, so. Alright. The East Coast is still a toss-up. East Coast and New England. And the Southwest. Well, Southwest is completely middling, but... Um, honestly, there's three here. There's there's four. That's safe already, so it's really three. That's two safes. That's toss-up, toss-up. MPP is likely, so it's two, two. And the Southwest is toss-up, toss-up, toss-up. So it makes more sense that we do the Southwest, because there's three there. So, And usually I can add, so... <clears throat> All right. Dr. Darwin, our old ally. New Zealand is a small and isolated country following the loss of her mother country. Isolated besides from Australia and the U.S. <clears throat> Let us remind them that we will never forget their sacrifices during the last war and their importance in the conflicts to come. A tax credit will be implemented for industries willing to invest in New Zealand or companies to encourage trade and homegrown production alike. Yeah, peace in Vietnam. Good job, Vietnam. Good morning, Vietnam. I would say so far, we're being pretty successful as Mr. George Daddy Wallace. After that, Semper Liber. In a better world, America might have found itself flush with allies, a true champion of democracy and freedom that would stand unrivaled in the world, its manifest destiny apparent to all. We're sadly far from that world, but we can still feel pride in the alliances we have created. In 20 years, we have turned a loose coalition of traumatized survivors off the world war, mostly former colonies cut off from their homeland, and turned it into a true alliance of freedom fighters, mobilized and ready to fight tyranny wherever it may encroach upon our shores. Let's take a step back and review our proud past before thinking about where we will take the OFN in the future. Mafia Money, Stonewall, Jim. I've read this one before, and I'll read it again, but... <clears throat> uh, let's see, let's do this one. Let's do this one first, and then we'll do it. So, uh, Stabilize Iberia. Let's help the AAS. Hopefully the AI knows what to do with this stuff, so... Actually, we might want to help these guys out, too, or Russia. Oh, ships of two of these guys? Sure, why not? Actually, oh, can we do anything else here? No? This is kind of disappointing, but whatever. There we go. <clears throat> like all organized crime establishments, the anonymous room and queens had the smell of cash, cigarettes, and too many secrets whispered into waiting drywall. The men were then paced about and spoke at length on the subjects one would expect. A laundering here, a five-dim issue there, the latest quotes for the bosses. Everyone knew enough to make sure they didn't leave the wrong words hanging in the air for the wrong ears. Shibboleths sprouted in the smoky mist. The Gen Genovese branch of the Mafia hadn't clung to the yellow halls of power on the East Coast by playing stupid. They certainly weren't going to start now. The struggle present wasn't one of power, but it's of its old friend, money. The New York joints had been busted up for a long time, and for a while, the patrons had settled for what they could get. Depression years and the chaos of the 50s had a way of killing any uptown pretensions, but now the miracles were covering the old middle class patrons were beginning to filter out. And even ones... The Costa Nostra, deemed distasteful, were moving in to take the place. The pimps were losing control of the situation on home turf. Something had to be done. <coughs> Anthony, Joe and Mark, not the real names, fiddled with a map on South Avenue on the table. A new joint, free of the putrid smell of the old town, would jazz up the revenues and act as a movement point for money, guns, inflammation, old trades, new ventures, easy money, but who would frequent it? It wasn't exactly Broadway, Anthony smiled. His next words would change history, even if he didn't actually know it yet. We open up to the queers. Ah, yeah. And hopefully they bring with them their music. Hmm. Let's see. We're still building up here, which is fine. Come on, America. We need more civilian consumer goods and such like that. Uh, let's see. After that, the docks of Darwin. A first step in escalating our military aid programs for the Australasian region would be to help fortify and expand the ports of Darwin, an important base for the U.S. Navy and our primary unloading point for equipment and vehicles going to the Australians. We cannot leave it vulnerable to the Japanese, can we? No, we can't. Um, diminish the image of Democrats? Well, for a while, the Democrat Party in this, in this universe was not doing very well after, you know, World War II. 
But, you know, it's alright. Citizens of a union throughout the country of the U.S. The will of President Wallace and the NPP has been demonstrated has been demonstrated. The U.S. has been brought together in a more se secure sense of unity than ever felt before. And while the moral righteousness of the far right wing of the MPP had aided the lives of Americans throughout the country, however, Wallace noted very worrying images of rioting and arson on the TV right as the, te telepho uh, the telephone of his office began ringing. Um, who is this? Wallace said in a frantic, nearly paranoid tune. Uh, Mr. President, it's Bird, sir. Wallace breathed a sigh of relief before starting up with a yell. Bird, what the heck is going down in Oklahoma? Well, sir, it's a complicated situation, Bird responded. Is it is it the gosh darn progressives? I swear I'll send every federal bad word marshal down there to skin them alive. Wallace screamed, Actually, sir, it's quite the opposite. Democrats in surrounding counties marched into Oklahoma City, joined with a few members of the far right MPP at that moment. Wallace's world sank around him with confusion, betrayal, but more importantly, rage. And why in the Sam bad word are they trying to burn Oklahoma City to the ground? That's my gosh darn supporters out there doing that stupid crap. Well, sir, the rioters were apparently captured protesting the recent actions of the federal government. Exceeding federal power over their promised states' rights has spur spurred the local conservatives into a frenzy, with one having been captured on live broadcast saying that Wallace lied to us, gosh darn it, we need him, and he gosh darn lied to us, sir. With another blow to the spirit, Wallace could feel his strength wavering, feeling betrayed as he knew Democrats would tear him apart. In a downtrodden state, Wallace murmured into his phone, sending the marshals before hanging up on the his national security advisor. What the heck happened? Hadn't I done everything just right? Wallace thought, what a mess. I get that we're not really doing a lot about states' rights and stuff, but guys, come on, man. Uh, East Coast, uh, tilt towards an MPP victory, safe MPP victory. We probably want to do East Coast, the Deep South. I think they're, we're probably going to get the Deep South regardless. The Upper South, I love the Upper South. Um, Toss-up Southwest, I mean, still the Southwest, but Great Lakes, Michigan, it's a toss-up. Safe, likely safe. Tilt, tilt, tilt. Actually, we might do the Rockies. Yeah, let's do the Rockies again. Uh, they're unhappy, unhappy. Yeah, people are unhappy, but, you know, what else is new? We're trying to win elections here, people. Come on. You gotta think about the bigger picture. Docs of Darwin and then our third eye. Oh, boy. Though we are already sharing most human intelligence on the J Japanese we have with the Australians, previous administrations have held back on sharing certain s signals intelligence info with them. For fear the Japanese would catch on that we've cracked their ciphers. However, we believe that the invaluable aid this would provide the Australians in keeping their country safe from the menace of the rising sun is worth taking the risk of the Japanese finding out. After all, even if they change their cipher, we are obviously just going to crack it again. That plastic junk they call computers in Japan could probably be decrypted by an American computer as small as your, on your typical desk. Nice. What else we got here? Oh, yeah. Democrats? Come on, guys. Well, let's do the, the uh, Republicans next. <laughs> even though we're going to need them to help pass legislation, that's totally okay. Totally, 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 totally okay. $140 billion? Not bad. Oh, Germany... Is continuing her march forward. Nice. Yeah, I definitely want more political power. And up next, we got about... Eh, we'll wait to do this up first. Cool. Uh, it is 66. Crash and burn. Nice. And we have a stellar campaign. Ah, oh, they crash and burn. I love it. Oh, uh, Senate class 2 elections. Oh, it's November 8th. Oh, oh, I forgot. It's already November? It's midterm times? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I can't wait. This is done and over. Oh, boy. I can't wait. Mm. Maintenance companies because we can. Support weapons. Nice. Very good, good, very, very good. Uh, let's see. Let's see what do we have here. Nothing, not really much here. Scout helicopters, we could do that, I suppose. Uh, oh, better artillery. Yes, please. All right. You know what? Spoilers. We're gonna take a look now how we're doing for the Senate. We have 51. Holy crap! 51 far right NPP senators. I'm sorry for if I, if I you know, screaming excitement. Holy bad words. That's a lot. <laughs> Oh, the NPP is one. Oh, they're the absolute majority. The 63 NPP senators. Holy bad words. This is what happens when you get Hawaii in here. Holy crap. That is a pretty solid south. It's not perfect. But we stretch from Florida all the way through Illinois even to Iowa and Minnesota. The West Coast loves us. Parts of the New England area love us too. Oh, this is going to this is going to be great. This is going to be really good. Even if we people want to impeach us. Oh, man. They can't impeach us with 51. 51 far-right senators. Yes. Oh, as you can tell, like, I have a, I have a big old smile on my face right now. Holy cow. <laughs> oh, man. I can't wait. Mm. Mm, I'm excited. But before we get down there, I would like to do United and Ready to finish this off first. So, Fortress Australia. Australia's vast coastlines and thinly spread population makes it hard to defend from a surprise Japanese invasion. We need to send fortification experts to help Australians protect their island from such a scenario. A fort can lock down an entire country from an attack and needs relatively little manpower to man. They lost eight 
senators from the Republican Party and seven Democratic uh, senators as well. Holy crud. Oh my goodness. That was a disaster for the RDs. Absolute disaster. Oh, we're in such a good position now. We are in too good of a position. Oh my goodness. I'm excited. I am so excited for this. Gamer Wallace. United and ready, though. The OFN stands poised, ready like a tiger about to leap. The time to tear apart the Copra sphere is now. No longer will we suffer the iniquities of tyranny, the monstrous exploitation of despots who think they are living gods. Let's let a call go out to all the noble sons of the free nations of the world. Rise for freedom, stand for democracy. Fight for independence, give us liberty, or give us death. The OFN grows even more united. This will aid war or add war support to every OFN member, or every OFN nation. And Germany just keeps going on, killing people. Oh my goodness, if you like to read about this, go right ahead, but... Oh my gosh. Like that, that just brings such a smile to my face. Nice. Actually, can we support these guys as well? Uh, give them $50 million. There you go. Anything else here? Ease Northern Fears. Oh boy. Goes more... Actually, United... Let's see. Actually... Let's see. Political landscape. We're ready for anything. An American society is somewhat united. <laughs> well, until we're down here, though. Oh, boy. All right, so we won the elections, which is good. Let's see. And we're going to do this part of the focus. We're going to repeal civil rights next. This is the absolute... We're going to go gangbusters on this section. So, this is a family of states. The U.S. is our home. Like many homes, it is home to a family. Each member is unique and has their own agendas and systems of belief, but all, they ultimately all work together to keep the household running. Those members sometimes argue, and that's okay, because what family is perfect? What's not okay is for the head of the household to beat down everyone who doesn't like what they're doing. This is a situation with the states and the federal government who tells the states that they can't do things that they want to because of, because of some man in Washington thought it was unfair. President Wallace intends to present this argument to the American people. Just because some states think things like segregation are wrong does not mean that others can't stand differently. Nice. Let's go and cut down this as well while we're here. So, Thank you. Thank you. Oh boy. A tape for tears. It is with a heavy heart I announce that today at 9.35 a.m. Walt Disney has died of lung cancer at St. Joseph's Hospital in Burbank, California. He was 65 years old. He survived by his wife Lillian, his daughters, two daughters Sharon and Diane, and a multi-million dollar empire of hope and joy. Never before has a man ingrained himself and his works into America's long memory, long memory before than Disney. Through his characters, he created Mickey Mouse, Peter Pan, Cinderella. He has touched the hearts of millions of the world over all of all walks and ages. Through the films he produced, of which there are now over 80s and counting, he has introduced America and beyond to limitless worlds of fantasy and magic, made us believe for a few short hours that these worlds were real. Through the parks he designed, he has blessed us with glimpses of a future where all men can see their dreams fulfilled, their inner child let loose without a care. The world is made brighter with his birth, and now made dimmer with his passing. CBS will hold a moment of silence to pay homage, shortly followed after by a montage of Walt Disney's finest works and an orchestral arrangement of the popular Mickey Mouse Club, March. May his legacy bring happiness for generations to come, and may the man himself rest in peace knowing that he has made many, many, many dreams come true. Let us pay laughter for every tear shed. Unhappy, unhappy? That's fine. Worker Diplomatic Arena, don't need to see that ever. Operation success, good job, gentlemen. Hmm. Cool. Maybe we can help out the guys down here. And anything in the Middle East? No? Yeah, just pretty much help out the Iberians. Cool. United and ready, my friends. Absolutely. Uh, increase unity. No, don't have to do anything about that. This is the family states, my friends. We are a family whether we like it or not. And hopefully none of us get estranged from each other. Hopefully. Oh, we're done building up stuff? What the heck? No. More roads? Uh, oh, keep building yourself up for now. I'm kind of okay with the current spending level, so. Uh, what's the ease? Northern, f Northern fears? No, not really too much here. Family estates. So, increase state's authority. Happy 1967, everyone. Hope you're having a great, great year. We're going to try to pass a bill into law. While the state governments have many rights within their borders, there are some things that they have to wait until some pencil push in Washington tells them that they're what they're allowed to do. And in the time that the bureaucracy takes to churn out its permission slips, the opportunity to act passes. We've got to cut the red tape and allow the states to act on their own initiative. It'll make their job easier, it'll make our job easier, it'll make those loudmouth losers in the streets job, or lack thereof, a heck of a lot harder. The answer to Atlanta. Wallace had another difficult day of fighting his enemies and his allies and with the sun already set. He figured he could enjoy some time in the Oval Office with his wife, Lorene, since he'd barely had time to see 
uh, her anymore. So you think you've won them over in Georgia, she asked? Oh, the people there were ecstatic. They loved it here. It's coming out of the news now. The president said, giving a hug to his wife before turning on the TV set in the darkness. Good evening, everyone. This is Howard Rag with NBC Nightly News, here to talk once more about President Wallace's time in Georgia on the Hots and Minds campaign. I'm joined tonight by Dr. Sebastian Roth, a political analysis working with the Republican Democrat office just an hour down the road from the rally in Macon, Georgia. From what we heard, Dr. Roth, President Wallace gave a rousing and, as the people of Atlanta have said, outstanding speech in front of the city hall about his work to fight for the freedoms and liberties of both Georgians and all Americans. What's your response? Lorene playfully patted George's shoulder, giving him a look of congratulations for his work. <clears throat> Well, Mr. Rag, to be honest with you, it's quite appalling that my fellow Georgians have resorted to the radical rhetoric of President George C. Wall, sir. To be honest with you, Mr. Rag, one of the best words to describe President Wallace's actions in Atlanta is the same one whispered about him that no one wants to say. Racist. Absolutely horribly racist, hidden behind a demeanor of emphasizing states' rights. Roth's words caused the president to stand up a bit from the chair he was sitting in besides Lorene as his face grew at work, a look of worry. So you don't believe that President Wallace cares about states' rights so much as he does to forward, uh, as you say, a racist agenda? The newscaster said, Well, Mr. Ray, I do believe that President Wallace does care about states' rights. However, only until it comes to butt up against the pre prejudice. I mean, let's look at the facts here. President Wallace has made his moves in the direction of enforced nationwide segregation, even in northern states where next to no one wishes for segregation. That's not a big guarantee on democratic lawmaking for states, isn't it? The no always faded away as a couple looked at each other. Wars. Wallace, torn apart by the response on national TV. I'm sorry, George. Lorraine said as he gets up, walks down the hall, and falls asleep silently in the bedroom. His wife slowly getting into bed, feeling his exhaustion. Can't catch a break? Well, who cares? I mean, seriously, like, they're going to demonize you anyway, so. Uh, besides, we haven't, we haven't done nationwide segregation. We've barely done civil rights stuff. So, I mean, all right, whatever. If they want segregation, they can have it. If they don't want segregation, they don't They don't have to have it. But you know what? I don't care what the Senate says because we have 51 of our members uh, far right supporting our bill. And we have all the Democrats here. I love the Democrats. None of the Senate love it. but And a few of the Republicans don't. Most of the Republicans don't love it. But hey, we have 60, 14 plus 51 is usually 65. We literally have 70 senators voting for the Defense Reordinment Re Re Act. Look, we just hear about freedom. They may call us the R word sometimes, but we love freedom. It's an American thing to love freedom, so. Oh, minus 27 billion. Wow, that's pretty good. Operation success? I think so. Nice, nice, nice. Only 0 0.74 every day. Could be worse. I don't think we're going to increase the budget anymore. I'm really going to be focusing on cutting it down, so. Nice, nice, nice. State, police, over federal. And their efforts to protect and serve the federal government has in the past sent their own goons as reinforcements to put down so-called riots by those opposed to their tyranny. How this is tolerated in a great and free country defies belief. Enough is enough. We're going to tell the federal authorities to get the heck back to Washington and go look for the actual enemies of America. The states themselves will be given total authority to use their own local forces to deal with issues as they see fit. Issues like violent mobs or progressives, for example. ADRA marches to victory in Congress. The U.S. of A, a country founded on a strong people willing to defend their home from all threats, both foreign and domestic, achieved a total level of shock regarding its system of defense since the war. U.S. is defeated at the end of the Second World War. President Wallace, ever more diligent on his fight to achieve greater powers for the states, governments, and his country, effectively pieced together a bill that passed through the Senate today, requiring a complete overhaul of the police forces of our country, establishing a requirement for each state to maintain a force of police which are co co constantly active, alongside a local defense division, to serve as a local defense force within the state, whilst freeing regulations regarding the activities of these police forces and their methods of enforcement. The country as a whole, however, remains heavily divided on the issue. The Walls administration finds American Defense Reordinment Act, known as ADRA, to be one of the crowning pieces of legislative accomplishments for President George C. Wallace. The president addressed the nation regarding the success of the act, saying, The American Defense Reordinament Act will allow the great people of this union of states to maintain law and order however they see fit. Furthermore, the local defense division of each state will guarantee a level of security and defense not handed down from Washington, D.C. as never before been seen before. The establishment from the LDDs has already inspired several thousands of applicants looking to potentially enlist and serve their state and country. However, the rhetoric has grown wildly in the country, as many find ADRA to be a direct violation of the status of the U.S. as a strong world power. The ADRA is a stain of the ability of the U.S. to stand as a global world power, one furious World War II veteran proclaimed in the protests in D.C. How on earth are we meant to secure ourselves on the world stage when we're so busy being our own citizens for knowing a little Japanese or German? Similar, several similar protests from both World War II veterans and pacifistic groups have broken out across the country. A union of states once more. And now we have state police over federal. Now, I do want to talk about that just a little bit, just because earlier, before this focus completed, actually, the vote, our voter base actually hated us because we, they were unhappy with 
are big government policies. So I'm not exactly sure how to improve their happiness. I don't want to do a hold a massive southern rally because that'll make us more divided. I don't mind doing easing northern fears, which would be probably be pretty good. A uh, meeting with Harrington, Harrington might not be bad as well. Expect more states' rights and stuff like that. So we'll see what happens. I think so far we're doing pretty darn well. So legitimize the state's authority. The federal government and the state governments do not always see eye to eye on things, nor should they. States, after all, I have a more clear picture of what is best for them than the ivory tower politicians in the capital who are too busy making sure that Japanese don't blow up the world to care. So, states and governments should have more of a say in how they are governed, specifically with regards to ensuring that the Constitution is abided by. State governors might consider certain laws to be unconstitutional, and should have the right to reject and avoid any directives that defy the Constitution, per their perception of it, at least. Defederalization will increase, legitimize the idea of nullification. Very cool. So let that go on. We're still doing stuff in Iberia. Hopefully, they just literally had an Iberian economic crash. So, all right, the Dragon Lady. Today's our lucky day, Mr. President. We have some technology that will change the Cold War. George Wallace has been tapping his foot under the desk for five minutes now, waiting for the Lockheed representative to make his important announcement. Just what could you possibly have now, Mr. Johnson? I haven't been impressed with your company in a while. We've been working on engineering this new spy plane, one that will expose the Germans and Japanese for who they really are, the representative says, a hint of suspenseful destruction filling his otherwise quiet voice. He steps aside to reveal a blueprint for the new revolutionary aircraft. The long, slender vehicles failed to make a good first impression on the president, who at once believed the aircraft was too light. He would need more information information and fast. The representative continued, This baby is a new and improved U-2, complete with better cameras for better recon. It's also faster than some of our recent planes, so it can go anywhere and back in no time. Not only that, Mr. President, but it's bigger and stronger. When it can't maneuver, it can take a hit. Now the president was intrigued. What if he says about the plane is true? The U.S. would certainly dominate the Cold War. Cold War. Aerocon is like that would be very useful in diplomatic situations, situations that the U.S. could outright win. All right, Mr. Johnson, I think we should take your plane on a test drive to make sure it really is what you say it is. I'm thinking we should send this plane over to Germany. Oh, boy. That's not going to be very good for them. So, There's still no one down here, but because we're not really focusing on that, which is totally fine. Operation success. Stabilize Iberia, because right now they're literally in an economic crisis. Let's take a look at this. See this. Oh, actually, we have two. Thank you. Oh, they actually, look at that. Optimized autarky. They have an economic bubble, which is not good. Uh-oh. Um, they had literally led by the council. These are the voyages. Last night. Mark the season finale of the American writer Gene Roddenberry's new science fiction phenomenon on Star Trek. So in the distant future, the TV program follows the starship USS Enterprise as it explores strange new worlds and meets new civilizations. With the ability to travel faster than light, produce inanimate objects from thin air, as well as teleport from one place to another in an instant. The show presents a bright, idyllic future for mankind that has always been very found very welcome in the hearts of people around the world. In the program, mankind is a principal species of the United Federation of Planets, a democratic union of dozens of alien races. The Federation has eliminated hunger, poverty, and even the need for money. Among humanity, there exists no prejudice or hatred, and the crew of the Enterprise, in addition to having several alien representatives aboard, has crew members from America, Germany, Russia, Japan, and Africa. Many Americans and watchers abroad have found this vision of a glorious future for the humanity to be to breathe a fresh air and to a breath of fresh air in a sobering, dark reality. While some may say that such a bright vision is unrealistic, few can argue that it provides a glimmer of hope and in a world where such a resource is in desperately short supply. To boldly where, go where no man has gone before. The Beach Boys release Smile. After nearly a year of waiting and three months of delay, rock fans across the country are clamoring to get to their feet or get their hands on the Beach Boys' latest album, Smile. Those who hope that the California rock band will return to their surface rock roots are sure to be disappointed and that the album's content doubles down on the Baroque and experimental nature of last year's pet sounds. There are strings, sections, banjos, bass harmonicas, recordings of bleeding goats, slide whistles, harpsichords, and theremins, and more, which combine to make a truly surreal symphonic experience. The rhythms and lyrics bring together folk songs, tone poems, classical Americana, national introspection on the country's sordid past, spiritual epiphanies, and intertwine of the body and soul. <clears throat> At least that's what some say. Others deride the album as a self aggrandizing catastrophe made by some, someone high in LSD and delusions of grandeur. The melody is muddled and chaotic, and the lyrics range from kitschy vegetables to round diet nonsensical cabinescence. The only somewhat enjoyable song on the entire album is Good Vibrations, which was released as a single by the rock band in October and number one hit on the Billboard Hot 100. Where fans see esoteric genius, critics see an incomprehensible mess. Where detractors hear the ramblings of an overdrug burnout, supporters hear the enlightenment of a tortured soul. Listen better back and forth between the critics have only served to drive more people to buy the album and see what the fuss is all about, propelling it further and further up the charts. Billboard estimates a gold certification is mere weeks away. I'm hoping to pick up good vibrations from this. Columnated ruined dominoes mean. We'll do that one. A quiet regret. 
or quite uh, a quiet request. We've been approached in a t manner typical of a delicate request by the Italian government or men acting on behalf of it. The Servizio Informazioni Militare, Rome's military intelligence body, has asked to trade information we possess on Italian nationals in return for information they have on American citizens. Naturally, we've approved the request and informed them that we'd be open to co cooperate in future in the interest of European stability and anti-subversive intelligence. This will help build Italian democracy. At least hopefully. Cool. Up next, we shall do, you are a citizen of a state and union. America is a glorious land for sure, but we have focused too much on praising the whole before the parts that make up of it. When people think politics, they think D.C., not the legislative battles going on in their own home state courts. We must remind the people that the true representation begins at home, and President Wallace means to give a big fancy speech to achieve this. The people must always salute old glory, of course, but by getting them to remember the cause of their own state as well, we can get them more interested in local politics, and in doing so, we secure more support to defend each state's way of life. Southern voters, of course, will enjoy this. All right, so signal company certified gold. The stage is tiny, sparse, just a white and red square surrounded on all sides by the audience. They're all Burbank locals brought in by a frantic radio announcement that earlier that day, Parker may have messed up with the tickets, but they're still there. Young women and mil young uh, men and women with smiles on their faces, eager to see the man in the center of it all. Eisen had been, had been terrible. He didn't mind all the GIs and Reykjavik locals who clamored for autographs. That was just fine by him, but it was so far from everyone. So far from Mama, especially which hurt more than everything else put together. When her liver gave out, it broke him. He practically had to bash the sergeant, desk sergeant's head in to give him leave, and during the funeral, friends and family had to hold him up to keep him from collapsing in heartbreak. And then the movies, each kitschier than the last, and each one more of a dud. Here he throw on a stage, guitar in hand, sweat dripping onto his leather jacket, basking in the applause and uh, cheers of a crowd, he'd, he'd happy. He's an icon, an electric conduit, a lovable mama's boy, a blot on the nation, sex incarnate. An infinite number of things, Elvis Presley's back. The image is one thing, and human being is another. All right, my friends, let's go with it. Very, very nice. Operational success, you bet we got success. Stabilize them, yeah, they're going to need a lot of stable stabilization for this one. Oof. Thank you. Anything about the debt? Yeah, Africa's looking not too bad. Cool. More armor? Yes, please. Even though we're not really using tanks too much right now. But we still have them. So, encourage state-level identification. Back in the good old days of America, a man considered himself a man of a state first and the Union second. A man from Georgia called himself a Georgian and a Virginia boy took pride first and foremost in his old Dominion state. Why did this ever stop? Let us make the states proud again. A public campaign to encourage the fine folks of our nation to take joy and honor in the home state will bolster the unique American spirit. And perhaps finally drill in, into those civil rights activists and heads that the idea is not everyone in this country is exactly like them. We will celebrate the diversity of the American nation. Oh, I love diversity. I'm pretty sure we helped out that Angola, but how are they doing? Led by Jonas Savimbi. Savimbi. Cool. Zombie? Honestly... Oh, the YouTube mission fails. That's not good. This doesn't look too bad. I mean, honestly, like, this could be a lot worse. But anyways, well, Mr. President, the YouTube mission did not go like uh, we had hoped. The spy plane was shot down by German SAM and crashed 20 miles north of Dortmund. Even worse, the pilot is now in German captivity. No doubt the secret police has given him a hard time. Thankfully, the photos our man took of Germany made it into our hands before we met his current fate. Though we lost pilot powers, we have some aerial shots of German lands, photos we can use if the diplomatic situation grows tense. Oh, crud. Uh... Or intense. We are certain that the Germans are going to want these photos and we want our pilot back so we could try to negotiate with a superpower. We have both valuable assets, so I recommend we try dipl diplomacy and get the Germans to give us what we want. Maybe we can deal with them and, oh, at the same time this happens off the coast of the Aleutians. Oh, no, no shrimp boat, please. On the Alaskan catch, a shrimp boat trawler a few days out from Unalaska. Captain Jeffrey Norbert squinted in the fog surrounding his boat, trying and failing to see anything more than a few ships lengths away. He tipped a steaming mug of coffee. His crew could be, would be pulling up the nets. All he had to do was keep watch, make sure they didn't run into any ghost ships. Hey, Cap. The nets are pulled up. We're ready to go. A crewman poked his head into the bridge, telling Norbert that they were ready to set off. Norbert shook his head. Now, when visibility is like this, we'll wait a few hours and see if things clear up. There's nobody around else here, Captain. We're the only American boats for miles. And come on, what are the chances that the Japanese are going to poke around so far from home? Norbert shushed the crewman, then peered through his binoculars. A dark shadow rising out of the fog morphed into the shape of a fishing trawler. Through his binoculars, he could make out a Japanese flag and, his, and a man in his opposing bridge staring back at him. Get on the horn, tell the Japanese to clear out. Oh, we have two crises happening at the same time. What? Oh boy, this is not going to go well, is it? Nice. But hey, keep going with the whole civil rights thing. It's only June 1st. we got to do this as fast as possible. The Japanese rammed her ship. Captain Norbert and his crew had been hailing the Japanese vessel for minutes, to no avail. They hadn't even heard a Morse code message back in signal lights in case the radio equipment was malfunctioning. 
The Japanese ship's engines caught their life, and the ship began to slide forward and turn towards the American catch. The engines roared, and the Japanese ship began to pick up speed without changing course. Get the engines going, Norbert screamed at his crew. The Alaskan catch's engines hummed, and the ship began to slide towards its waters, too slow to dodge a Japanese ship if it stayed on course. The Japanese ship drew closer and closer until the last moment it swerved, boating a head-on collision, but with the entire length of the ship slamming against the Alaskan catch. Norbert and his crew were thrown into the deck as the Alaskan catch reeled. Captain, what are your orders? Get him back. Get screw it, get us out of here. Uh, hit him back, gosh darn it, straight on. Pilot powers returns. Wow, look at that. Okay. Another clear di diplomatic victory is in our sights. Several days ago, while on a mission to obtain air recon of Germany, Pilot Francis Powers was shot down and captured by local police. There he was locked up and locked and tortured by his captives into revealing classified information. Talks between Americans and Germans grew tense when even the president stepped in to demand the pilot's safe return. The Germans fear and his lackeys had no choice but to surrender the pilot and bring him back to the States. Today, Powers landed in his native country to an enormous crowd of ecstatic Americans waiting to congratulate him. Thousands more watched the event on TV as the entire country seemed to welcome him back. The pilot's day is far from over. He will soon be evaluated for injuries before having dinner with the president. There's no doubt that the U.S. government is celebrating his monumental victory over the Nazi Germans. For the, first, uh, for the rest of the world, peace reigns yet again as Earth looks towards another day of free nuclear war. Free of nuclear war. Welcome home. That was easy. Glorious states of a glorious union. Within the heart of Georgia, the metropolitan area had become booming and bustling all week. President Wallace was making a trip down to Atlanta itself, and the people of Georgia could not stand to see a president unwelcome. The flash of fireworks, the wavering of banners, the sweet smell of barbecues, and the trumpeting of marching bands, President Wallace was all the rage across the capital of Georgia. There would be no calming down until he delivered the speech everyone had waited for, a speech praising the state of Georgia for safeguarding the rights of the true Americans. The noise and ruckus all around the city served to worsen the headache of President Wallace that morning, but to the people of Georgia, he only offered smiles and handshakes to those patriotic citizens, finally in the front of City Hall, or Atlantic City Hall. President Wallace mounted the podium and began a segregated serenade with a clear good morning to all the patriots of Georgia and thank you for coming out on this bright and beautiful day. The crowd cheered heavily for the president, you know, ever since I was a little kid in Alabama. I had known one thing, America is great and the Americans are the country's source of greatness. Everywhere I look, hard work men fought in the workplace and on the front lines, doing everything. They could for, for friends, family, country, yet as I grew up and I saw within the lawmakers of D.C. certain parasitic qualities, they loved that work. Uh, but wanted all the profits for themselves. The crowd immediately roared in support. My fellow Americans, you are a citizen of a state and the union. You are Georgians. You do not deserve your greatness spoiled by some bug in a suit in the country's capital. In all my life's work, my God given duty to secure for the state of Georgia the rights and, uh, and liberties it needs to give you all the freedoms you deserve. It is not a question of the politicians as to whether you wish to say halt or to the Negro at the door, rather, it is a question whether you ought to decide for yourselves. Your liberty is justice, it is righteous, and I refuse to allow some liberal federal wacko in Washington to deprive you of your rights so we can look good on the Sunday paper. You are Georgians, you are Americans, and I stand by you. With the conclusion of the president's speech, the people of Georgia were in a frenzy of support of the president's and his words that day. The bands played, the hamburgers and hot dogs were cooked, and the Amer African Americans were thrown out of restaurants. <laughs> good for the Georgians. Well, it's up to the people to decide what they want to do, I guess, so... Operation success? Sounds good to me. Purity and progress. President George C. Wallace had been idling at his desk for a few minutes, taking a breath from his work when he had a stark realization as the TV played in the background. He hadn't heard of the news of a civil rights protest in days. When then, that's when, after so long, the president began to add up all the recent events and phone calls that they had been pouring in. Consistently, after the showdown of Tuscaloosa a few days prior, Wallace had heard a variety of phone calls from his far-right constituents within the Senate. Now more than ever, one of the more powerful, most powerful far-right senators said over the phone that people are calling into my office happily. All of them feel empowered knowing that they have the right to shut the Negroes out of their businesses and schools. I know it must have been heck, President Wallace, but you sure gave them that, some of that heck to get us where we are now. Thank you. Wallace happily grinned and reminding himself of his praise, knowing he had done as the true patriots of America had wanted all along. That's when Wallace thought of the idea. He gathered Lorene and got to his driver to bring them to Orlando to the local D.C. area to check out the sights on this beautiful day. And a beautiful day it was, in Wallace's mind, as the more he looked around, the more he saw the sights of no blacks allowed, whites only, and his personal favorite one he saw, Afros go down the street. Even as he watched the streets, he knew that the U.S. was made white in his image and as he had wanted it to be. All the while, Lorene happily sat in the car beside her husband lovingly. On their way back to the, U uh, the White House, I mean. The president's vehicle had stopped at a red light. That's when Wallace got a good look at the other side of the town, at, down a large boulevard. When he saw black citizens roaming the streets in tattered clothing and dilapidated buildings, shut, shut out from the industrial city Wallace had just seen. And that's when the car began to move forward, Wallace never having to see that side of town. As it should be, right, Lorene? Right? Right? The sinking of the Alba model. 
What do you mean the Coast Guard picked up Japanese fishermen in, in American waters? And why is this coming to me? The head of the Japan or Japanese desk at the Department of State's Bureau of East Asian and Pacific Affairs gave a subordinate a quizzical look. With most of the Pacific in Japan's hands, there were a few reasons why a Japanese fishing boat would enter American waters, and if they had, why was the state getting involved with a simple deportation issue? A concerned citizen rammed this fishing boat into a Japanese boat near Alaska, sinking it. They brought the survivors back to the Coast Guard. His subordinate replied sheepishly, <clears throat> Well, bad words. Even if the Japanese were in American waters, having an American boat ram a Japanese one and sink it was going to cause some problems. I'm guessing the Japanese government's got something to say. They wanted help looking for any survivors that might have been meant gone missing. The veteran diplomat signed relief. That's it. No bombastic statements about territorial claims or requests to turn our people over for the trial in Japan? No, sir. The subordinate looked equally relieved. They did claim it was in the waters, but they won't press the issue. Thank goodness. Okay, so I didn't even save scum for this one. We literally got both the crisis with Japan and Germany peacefully rectified in the very first go so that's actually really awesome that is that seems kind of rare but yeah you know what totally fine with me this just means that george wallace is doing the right thing if everything is coming together for the most part everything's mostly aligned i mean it's just the, the spirit of george wallace is gracing us with his uh power his dedication to the country despite what's happening to some of the people here because of attributes they cannot control we'll put it like that we'll put it like that Cool. And we're still building some civilian factories in Hawaii, as well as some uh, roads, which is super, super important. So Ascension, St. Helena, Alaska. Keep building up all that stuff. Spinning cogs are gone. I love it. Restore states' militias. Ever since the founding of our great country, many states have maintained their own militias outside the control of the U.S. Armed Forces. These patriotic bands of brothers keep... Uh, serve their state governors directly, keeping their homeland safe and responding to local crises. Membership of these many militias have declined gradually since the end of the war, but now is the perfect time to kick them back into gear. Put out some recruitment campaigns, let's get the red-blooded sons of our nation back together to protect the states and give them that gave them birth. And with a few relaxed restrictions, state governors can put the militias to work dealing with these current crises. The quality of our military might suffer. Um, restore states' militias. I mean, doesn't each state have its own National Guard? So... Less organization, less planning speed, more recruitable population, increases states' rights. Uh, let's see. Let's stabilize Iberia some more. Thank you very much. And what do we have down here? Unhappy, unhappy. Uh, you know, maybe we could just do one of these. More states' rights and segregation. Well, I mean, we're going to get that anyway, so. Ease northern fears. Yes. Yeah, so reassure the center branch of the party about our intentions. Grows them a little more unified. This might be bad to do, but we're going to do it anyways. Okay, it did nothing. Oh, no. Wait, when it's removed. Okay. So then after this, we grow a little bit more unified. Actually, it's probably just a waste. But then again, it does help ease the center. So, because they're not going to help us at all, probably anyways. But whatever. We have, we have enough political power for this, so. Field hospitals are very nice. And by the end of this episode, I do want to be able to repeal civil rights. Am I going to, am I going to go as far as say civil rights were a mistake? I mean, for George Wallace, it is. Um, that's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> anyway, so, operational success. Now we can do, oops, my bad. Either segregation belongs to the states, or the segregation or the government shall maintain segregation. Uh, I, what I've heard, like I don't know this for a fact, but what I've heard browsing through the Reddit, or the subreddit, that if the right side really doesn't do that much, honestly, it just empowers the communists or the far left. So we're gonna go with segregation belongs to the states, which makes sense with the way we're going with things. But we'll do that as soon as we get our technology for our little tankerinos and APCs. Uh, anything else here? Why do we have thirteen here? Oh, it's because of uh, this stuff. $15 million is nothing to the federal government. Absolutely nothing. Cool. <clears throat> so, segregation belongs to the states. Many states want segregation. We heartily agree with them. But we must confess that even with us in charge, the federal government coming down to do all the work for them would be slightly hypocritical to our campaign promises. No. Instead, we must ensure that each state has a clear path to implementing segregation on their own terms. And that means ensuring that they have the resources they need to bulldoze any obstacles that stand in their way from now on. The word of each state's governor shall carry as much authority within their state as the president's word does to the nation. This will increase states' rights and the segregation level. The National Progressive Party grows a little more unified. So if you want it, you guys can have it. If you don't want it, then don't have it. Cool. Anything else here? Stabilize Iberia some more. Why not? Cool. Extremely unhappy with our lack of sec... What do you mean? Democrats and extremists unifying our party. Defleated Democrats and extremists. Ex what do you mean? Oh, hold on. 
What do you think we're doing right now? Support civil rights counter protests. There are many Americans who reject the civil rights movement, whether they agree with segregation or simply reject the hooliganism of its opponents. These true patriots continue to stand up while enduring appalling abuse from the so-called supporters of equality. We must give them aid to these forces, such as providing them with police protection, giving out more support to the state's troopers to help out putting down violent mobs opposing them. May have unforeseen consequences. Increase their support in the South. Good. What, what do you mean you're extremely unhappy? I'm giving you what you want. You want it, you can do it. If you don't want it, you don't have to do it. You can never please everybody. Mm. But that death's not looking too bad. Not too bad if I do say so myself. So, stop whining. Which is literally what I just told these people. So... Still, the one the activists march out in their streets demanding that the democratically decided will of the people be overturned. Still, they damage public property, block our highways, and callously beat up good, honest Americans. No more. It's time to throw the book at them. Lock them up, smack them down, do whatever needs to be done to shut them up. And if any demonstrator ever lays down in front of my car, I'll be the, it'll be the last car he'll ever lay down in front of. It's increased states' rights. This is exactly what we're giving the people. That's what they voted for, right? More political powers with some more stability. Chita unites the Russian Far East. Very cool. Oh, wait, we're only allowed 10 operatives, but we have 12. We had 12. Extremely unhappy, unhappy. Guys, come on. The state of states' rights. Lack of segregation. Bros, we are pushing hard for this now. It's September 68, and we want to do this before the election cycle, so. And? We have one day's left. Cool. A showdown most fierce. President Wallace's eyes have been glued to the TV set in anticipation for the events that have been unfolding in his, unfolding in his home state of Alabama. Next to him, Bird had been on the phone uh, all morning coordinating what could mount up to be a disaster for the president. Only time could tell for the two men if they were able or about to bear witness to a bloodbath or a victory. That morning, a group of 45 black students departed from Druid High School, the black school for the Tuscaloosa School Zone, to march to the gates of Tuscaloosa High School, demanding to leave Druid as it emphasized the teaching of manual skills rather than promising a path to university-based education like Tuscaloosa High School did. A segregated school for only for, of whites only. Now President Wallace stroked his chin as he watched the standoff between Excuse me, federal soldiers and guarding the gates of uh, the segregated school and the protesters. The gates were shut, the rifles were loaded, and each second ticked by while the possibility of the slaughter group. While they occasionally gave off a single cha chant, the group of students were silent for the most part, acting as if entering Tus Tuscaloosa High was their right, contrasting from the law. Stupid bad word kids, you need to get back home, we don't need this right now. Wallace said, slamming the oval off his desk with his fist. The protesters aren't trying to fight anyone. They've calmly approached the guard, asking to finally be let in. Bert said, I don't give a crap what these kids want. This, the law is the law. Segregation is segregation. I'm not allowed to step foot into that school's courtyard. Bird, the president shouted as a national security advisor. The soldiers stood resolute in the face of the wall of protesters which had formed. Meanwhile, a large crowd of white adults had been flanking the 45 students, shouting at them, demanding they move on. Finally, after a blood-curling hour of anxiety, Wallace felt relief as the leader of the protesters backed down and walked the group back down to Druid High School. Local and federal authorities were investigating the matter of the students involved. Meanwhile, the president poured drinks to the offer a cheer to Bird, with whom he said, segregation stands strong before drowning the liquor. Thank God that's over. Uh, I'd be, I'd, I'd question, like, who's in the, who's controlling the curriculum for that one high school, you know? But maybe, maybe that's just me. That'd actually be probably really good to, you know, know who's controlling the curriculum. Cool. Armor, even more. I'm not gonna use them, but even more. Anything else here? Yeah, it's, it's weird. Extremely unhappy with the lack of segregation legislation. We're giving you what, what you want, so. But the end of the Civil Rights Act. Oh, uh, we'll read that once we get these technologies done. Oh, Puyi's dead. Goodbye, Puyi. Very cool. And, Mr. President, throughout your entire time in office, you've had one single goal, and that is to end the abomination known as the Civil Rights Act, which not only tramples upon our get given American liberty and independence, but <clears throat> also threatens our way of life and everything with it. All the groundwork is now in place, and the segregation of our bureaucratic trickling, the removal of opposition from the northern states, and all of your other projects. We have the groundwork, we have the support. It's time to remove the desperate work of a misguided man and open the door for Mr. Jim Crow. So repealing it, this decision will greatly polarize the U.S. and possibly end your presidency early. Tread carefully. The focus tree will change. Changes? Oh. Do we have even more then after this? All right, so let's take a look here. They're, you're extremely unhappy, guys. Guys. You just... They, they just don't want to be happy. They just don't want to be happy, do they? They have half a billion... Half a trillion in the GDP. Look at that. Not bad. Cut it down, son. Cut it down. 
the dance partner. Here in Stonewall Inn, the dances are many. Uh, dances profane and holy, intimate and vast, money and poor lack. For now it's all John Russo can do to keep up with one. Left and left and right and left again. A swirl of the body still swooping. It belongs in the parade square, not the rough towels on the end floor. Then the shoes opposite him tra trace the contours and last slips and end up in their original placing by some arcane coincidence. Martin glares at him with visible annoyance. John looks down in sheepishness. The woman stretches taut, pulls apart and snaps. Martin bursts out laughing, tri tickled, tickled by something on John's face and pulls himself... Pulls him to himself. His smell smells, smells of smoke and aftershave. The kiss is tart and startling in the dim neon. John pulls back with old instincts of the Brooklyn boy who always knew how much of himself to show and how much to hide. But they, a part of him, resists. Instead, he says, it's raw comfort and in the glittering sharpness of the moment, it's all he has. Martin pulls away from some reluctance. The day has been brief, and even in this hour has been snatched at great cost. They haven't much time. He takes John's arm, and together they spin out of the little bar, their, their little dance studio. Their fingers are quickly lost in the chaos and brilliance of the New York night, blending in neon-shaded phantoms before disappearing. How romantic. All right, let's see. Cool. Just keep cutting out that budget. I gotta play Bennett sometime, man. I really got to. Uh, the National Progressive Party. How badly can we screw this up? And actually, Hawaii is back here, yeah. They're progressives. We love it. Well done, man. Well done. Can I spy on the Republicans and Democrats as the NPP? That'd be kind of cool. Um, Democrats, yeah. D diminish the Democrats because we're losing, we're hemorrhaging like, support to the Democrats. So we got to do that one. So Whatever with this one. Cool. And I don't know about the other focus that happens with this, so. Actually, do we have a vote for this or something? Or independence? Cool. Cool. And end of the Civil Rights Act. Operational success. Is that it? Or do we have more for the civil rights? We probably have more, says, I think, right? Oh, boy. Time to save America. Uh, the Civil Rights Act repeal bill would be introduced into Congress. Uh, get back in your place. Repeal the Civil Rights Act. Uh, let's see. You know what? I'm more likely to vote for the bill. I think the end of the Civil Rights Act, yeah. Uh, I don't, can't believe we have another thing we have to do here. Especially during an election year. I think for now, I'm going to re-look at the guide I'm following. And we'll end the episode there. We'll probably do this anyways, but we'll see. In 1964, a tidal wave of southern fury crashed down upon the nation and put George Wallace in the Oval Office. If the electoral mandate was simple, repeal Nixon's intolerable acts at all costs. Now it's time for Wallace to make good on his promise to the, the American people. He's about to undo the terrible damage that Johnson, Kennedy, Nixon, King, and all those domestic civil rights terrorists have done to the American way of life. President Wallace will start drafting the American National TV Reservation Act. This act will repeal the Civil Rights Act of 1962, as well as provide timetables and procedures for our southern states to begin resegregating, and if we have to choose, have such chosen a path, for northern states to introduce segregation. We will also implement full segregation in federal institutions and push towards segregation in the armed forces. It will also give police departments a broad range of powers to enforce segregation, but first, we must secure enough support in the Senate to get this bill to Wallace's desk, and some campaigning and promise may be necessary. Compromise might be necessary. But regardless, I'm going to double-check this, all the stuff here, uh, and make sure that we do what we need to do. It looks like we're, we're forced to go down that way, which is, well... It is what it is. But regardless, if you enjoyed this episode, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we will have a good time with civil rights, like it or not, I guess. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.